Welcome, everybody. We've been talking quite a bit these past six months about how great Atlanta products are in classroom and boardroom environments, with the release of many of their most recent products. But that's not all that Atlanta is great at. This webinar is going to focus on other applications to help engineer your current and future projects for a more robust and cost-effective solution. I'm Kim Robin, Senior Marketing Manager of BTX, and I'll be your host throughout this session. Joining me today from Atlona is Ken Eagle, who is the Director of Training and Technical Sales. Ken is responsible for setting the global direction in product and sales training for Atlona, as well as managing the day-to-day -day responsibilities of application engineering and assisting with other sales opportunities. He has experience on both the pro and resi side of things, and in both manufacturing and integration. So it goes without saying that he has a breadth of experience to answer most questions. When you work with BTX, you work with a team of people whose mission it is to take you beyond distribution and be your partner of choice. In addition to supplying many thousands of the finest interface, integration, and system products, we also engineer our own unique and patented solutions. We have deep technical expertise on all of the solutions that we provide, and our applications engineers inside and outside sales teams are readily available to help you specify, purchase, and then support your project requirements. Our full product line card offers thousands of products to make implementation of your projects run smoothly. Among the many key integra integration building blocks that we provide are custom cable assemblies, custom plates and panels, video extenders, signal distribution, and cable management. And I'm going to uh, give it over to you. Great. All right, I'm going to try and give it over to you. Here we go. Okay. Very good. Thank you again. Thank you again, Ken, for joining us. And just a reminder to everybody, feel free to ask any questions along the way, and we will stop, and Ken will be happy to answer them. Let's see, do you see this, my screen there, Kim? I do, Ken. Excellent. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for being here. I know we're getting close to the holidays, and everybody's time is valuable at this point, so I appreciate you tuning in. What I want to do today is take a look at uh, a couple of the uh, more common applications that we see for some of the loan solutions that fall outside of the classroom and the classroom. We'll touch on a couple of those, too, but we'll look at uh, some of the other, uh, the other locations that are beyond the classroom and conference room. So, the question is, where do you find one of the solutions? You find them in lots of places. Uh, take, for example, the kids are in 12. Uh, we find them in schools. Uh, they're in the classroom there, but they're also in uh, distributed uh, AV applications within those, like uh, campus-wide uh, audio video distribution systems in there. Um, in the university also, of course, you've got the classroom, but outside of the classroom, you've got a campus full of uh, ways to communicate via media digital signage, wayfinding applications. Um, the hospital, too, is another one that not a lot of people think of, but we do a lot of work in the hospital. You've got um, medical training labs, uh, nurses stations, uh, both uh, local and distributed across the floor. So there's some really cool applications there. Uh, public municipalities, things like police stations, courthouses, uh, city town centers where you've got a lot of public communication going on. You've got many board wayfinding applications, and again, education rooms in there. And how about stadiums? Uh, the obvious thing here is, is uh, in this picture is look at the stadium. You've got a huge audience. You've got message boards there. You've got a way to communicate. But think inside the stadium now. You've got uh, audio systems in there. You've got video. Uh, you've got retail stores. And how about all the little food shops with all their different uh, menu boards on the wall? There's lots of places for loan applications inside of there. And of course, the standard uh, corporate building that we talk about, talk about all the time are our conference rooms and our lobby applications there as well. And so many more. So we'll take a look at some of these. We'll start with the single display solution, and we'll build up from there. So in a single display solution, here's the place where loaner really shines. You can look at all the competitors out there. We have some really great products in this category. Uh, we've come at a very uh, competitive price point. And you think of all the single display applications out there. There's more single application uh, 
single display applications than any other type of application out there. So a single display solution is we'll have one display. It might be a flat panel. It might be a projector. There may be some video scaling involved in that. And you may have multiple input points. They may be located together or remote. Uh, and it could be a mix of uh, digital HDMI type signals or analog VGA signals. Uh, but a single display system should be easy to operate. It should be a simple, easy on-off. Uh, and you may want some kind of basic two-channel audio system in there and a mic input. <clears throat> Here's two additional examples. The room on the left is actually a theater-style room, which was built for a college football team where they do film study. It's a great application to showcase a simple alumno. Uh, one display solution with multiple inputs. And then the image on the right, here's the municipality, is a police station where you've got an officer teaching a course there. He's got an input at a podium. He can take over a single display, uh, use that in a class, or he can even take that over and, and uh, do some kind of a um, menu board or digital science type of display, even outside the room. So how does a solution, an alone solution like that work? What does it look like? It's basically a transmitter and a receiver. It's an extender pair. Uh, and we use HD base with our extenders. So in the diagram here, you've got a transmitter. That's the box in the middle on the left. And you have a receiver. That's the box in the middle on the right. So the transmitter will sit where your presenter is, uh, whether it's a podium uh, or a conference room table, uh, or maybe it's located behind a desk where somebody uses a computer and plugs in a real simple um, menu app, a wayfinding app, a digital signage app, and they send some video. Uh, out to a display that's located out in a lobby uh, or a common area. <clears throat> Notice I've also got a small amplifier hooked to the receiver because this receiver here will do audio de embedding, so it'll take audio out. We can run it to an, an, an Lona amp or even to an existing in room amp into an audio system there. Uh, and these two extender pairs are connected via a single category cable. So the receiver, which is going to sit up near the projector or behind the flat panel TV, we need to be powered. You have to plug that in. That will actually send power over the category cable to the transmitter, making the transmitter a real simple installation. Uh, located on a desk uh, or even at a podium or a conference room table, simply plug the category cable into it. It's powered up. All your transmission lines are ready to go. That's audio, video, control, power all over that single line. So real simple solution there. Uh, here is the exact same solution. But rather than having a box version for the transmitter, I'm showing you a wall plate version. Uh, just kind of the flexibility and versatility and where this type of solution can be located. You know, a box can be hidden, tucked away under a table or, or, or real conveniently located. Uh, and then a wall plate is real nice if you're going to put that into a full box. I'll show you some examples. Uh, or maybe into a wall or into a table outlet. Here's a close-up on those just to kind of give you a little detail on how those transmitters work. You've got the wall plate version on the left and the uh, box version on the right. These are both the transmitter. I notice you've got a single HDMI input on the wall plate version, but I got a little more real estate on the box version, so I've got two HDMI inputs over there. Uh, you also have the VGA input, and notice right next to that, there's an input for analog audio, so we can embed your analog audio right onto the category cable and send that along to the receiver uh, to be presented uh, for the audience as well. You have simple to control buttons. You've got a nice power button there, which allows a uh, client to walk in, press the power button, the whole system turns on, turns the display on as well, via RS-232 commands. And you've got a nice input select button right there uh, so that the customer has a manual control between the HDMI and the VGA inputs. You've also got power uh, built right into that, easy to set up, uh, firmware which allows you to update the boxes in the field if necessary, uh, and then the category input which connects the two boxes together. Now on the other side, the receiver, that's what you're looking at now. Yes, go ahead, Kim. Sorry, I, I, I believe you mentioned this pretty quickly, but can the uh, HDVS control a screen at the same time as a projector on off? <clears throat> so are you asking, um, we're turning the projector display on and off, but you want to know if we can fire a command to trigger a screen to drop down, a, mobile, a motorized screen? Uh, it says control a screen, the person who asked the question. So I don't know. Okay, uh, well, yeah. If it'll go up yeah, and down. Sure. Okay. Yeah, correct. You can do that. You can do that. So this is a simple RS-232 control. Those buttons, even though they're labeled display on off and input select on there, uh, those can be set up to do whatever you would like them to do. So if you have a separate control system for your screen and you want to fire an RS-232 command that says drop a screen, you can do that. A lot of uh, 
projectors will also have a, a, a 12 volt trigger on them, which once you fire the projector on, it'll trigger the screen to drop and then go back up when it turns off. And as far as the flat panel goes, you can certainly control the flat panel on and off from the button as well. Hopefully that answers the question there. Yes, I think it did. Thanks, Ken. You're welcome. And then here looking at the receiver, and let me and just go back to that last question, talking about um, RS-232 control. Notice on the receiver here, you're seeing both the front and back sides of the receiver. In the center, uh, you've got a little round uh, 3.5 millimeter plug. It says RS-232 under it. That breaks out to a regular um, uh, nine pin dongle that will allow you to connect to an RS-232 system to program it. So your programming is done right here at the receiver, and you put your codes in. Uh, for a flat panel TV or for a projector, for example, so you can power that on and off. Uh, also on uh, the receiver here, there's your HDMI out. So category cable comes in from the transmitter. Then you break that out um, from the HDMI cable right to the display, the TV or the projector. Uh, audio de embedding is built in, so you can take your, strip your audio off the incoming line and send it to a local audio system. There's the RST32 I mentioned, uh, your control lights. And this particular receiver is a little different than our standard HD based receiver because this particular receiver actually has a scaler built into it. That's why you see the three white buttons on there. So this scaler will scale the resolution as well. And why would we want to do that? Well, remember on your input plate, you've got a mix of VGA and HDMI uh, input types, which means you could have different resolutions coming in. And you've seen this before. You go into a, a uh, to present, somebody brings a laptop, everybody's laptops can be set to different resolutions. And so then you get that uh, image on the screen where it's squished too small and everything stretched too big and it doesn't look quite right. Well, we built the scaler into the receiver here so that we can always uh, scale that incoming image to match the native display, the native resolution of our display. So it's built right in, makes it real easy for the client who's using the room to walk, walk in, plug in, turn the system on, and it just works without having to fuss around with resolution. There's your category input, uh, the firmware update, and the power connector as well. Hey, uh, Ken, I'm sorry. I'm going to interrupt you one more time. Please so the, the, um, the follow-up question to controlling the screen and uh, on-off on the projector is volume control. Can you control volume as well? Um, so right now, the, only, the way you have to control volume would be from the source. So if you had a laptop, for example, you could control the volume at the laptop. Um, and then if you had an external control system in the room for your audio system, for example, you could control the volume from there. But you wouldn't actually program the volume control inside of this receiver. Now, I will mention that that is a common uh, question that comes up when you've been asked if we could add that feature. And it is something we're looking at bringing to the HDVS system later in 2015, although I don't have any kind of um, release information on that right now, but I do know that our engineers are looking at it. Now, um, is the Cat yeah. 5 6, is the Cat 5e, Cat 6 unshielded? Now, the way that works, so this is HD base T. So with HD base T communication, you can use Cat 5e, Cat 6, Cat 7. It can be shielded or unshielded. Now, what I will say is the spec um, is for HD base T is based on CAT6 shielded cable, which means the distance limitation between the transmitter and receiver here is 230 feet or 70 meters, and that distance is based on uh, CAT6 a uh, CAT, I'm sorry CAT6 shielded cable. So if CAT5 is being used or is in place, for example, and it's not shielded, you are going to lose some distance. In fact, you're going to drop from a max of 230 down to a max of roughly 195 feet would be your max distance if you drop to the cat 5 e on children. So you can use that cable, but just know you are going to lose a little bit of distance by uh, not having the shielding in there. But it will work just fine. Now, the receiver also has a breakout for audio de embedding, so we can take audio and run to a separate amp. Alona makes a small amp called the PA100G2. This is a great little system to pair with the HDVS transmitter receiver. Uh, and if you look at this guy right here, you're seeing the front and the back of it. Notice that I've got inputs, RCA inputs, and 3.5 millimeter inputs for my audio coming in. I've also got mic input. 
Uh, you can't see the buttons on the top of this, but there are volume control buttons on this as well. So this here would allow you to control volume for the room. And this little device is controllable via IR or RS-232. So it also comes with a little handheld remote. So you could go ahead and control this, this device. Uh, you, know, you could have a mic input directly into it and audio from the HDVS. So it's a very simple little box, uh, but kind of does a lot uh, in conjunction with the HDVS system. Uh, you've got a breakout for your uh, audio, uh, 2 times 40 watt, so that's, that's 40 watt mono amp or 20 watt uh, stereo. You've got a loop out, so let's say you need in a little bigger room and you wanted to have four speakers rather than two, you can connect two of these together and give yourself four speakers in the room, and then there's your power connector. So to combine these pieces together, that transmitter, the receiver, and this audio amplifier for a complete solution, looking at a retail price point of $1,069. So it's an extremely affordable solution, which gives you a lot of features. Uh, one of the other things I didn't get a chance to mention, this receiver also has the ability to program in uh, some kind of uh, auto sensing capability. So in other words, when a customer walks into a room and plugs a source into that transmitter, whether it's the box or the wall plate, the receiver is going to be alerted and say, oh, I've just received a signal. I'm going to go ahead and automatically turn on the TV. So think about that. The client walks in, they plug in their source, and everything automatically turns on when they unplug. You can also set a timeout value so that when a signal is removed, everything turns off. So then the person does a presentation, they unplug their cable, and everything shuts off. So now you've got a system that was very easy for you to install and extremely easy for a customer to use. Uh, you also um, don't have to power the transmitter because that is powered over a category cable. Uh, you've got multiple options for the transmitter. Uh, easy setup with the GUI interface. You have the auto switching capability between the HDMI and VGA. It's going to switch to whichever one has the live signal. Or you can use that source button right on it to manually switch if you want. Um, Scaling is built into the receiver. All of this at a price of just over a grand. And on top of that, I didn't mention it yet. But all of these products carry a 10-year minimum warranty, uh, which uh, you know outdoes any of our closest competitors' warranties, which max out at about three years. So a lot of advantages to using a system like this. You can see how it can easily be tailored for uh, something like a classroom or a conference room. But outside of that, it works great for presentations, uh, for things like lobbies, uh, digital signage applications, even residential applications. We see this product used. Ken? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Ken. Sorry. We, we actually have quite a few questions that, uh, that came in. So can you talk, um, when, you, when you look at the, the, the uh, HVS, um, why are, uh, can you explain the thought process behind using 24 volt for power and why audio is the same as the power connector? Let me just go back here. Um, we are looking at the receiver. So uh, we use we use the uh, the um, the reason we use the 24 volt power and the breakaway like that is uh, it, it is easier. A, a lot of our dealers will do multiple extenders together in certain applications. Uh, a lot of times they're in a rack or a tight space, and it's tough to have to uh, use a wall wart or a power supply for every single one of these. So with this type of power, we can go ahead and daisy chain a couple of units together off of one power supply. And by using the uh, the, the uh, breakout power like that, those kind of connectors, uh, it allows us to connect multiple together. Uh, gives a little more versatility in the insulation for our dealers. It allows them to save space in the power as well. Um, and for the audio, um, I guess I'm not sure I understand the question on the audio there. Can you ask that once more? Um, I, you know what? I'll let him clarify. It's something about the connectors being the same. Let's see if he comes back with a, you know, why are the connectors the same? Yeah, I, um, you know, I, I'll give you an example. The reason we use those, those breakout connectors on there, uh, because they're, they're much easier. I mean, these devices are pretty small, uh, and you're working in tight areas a lot of times. So you can take your audio cable and, and the little uh, adapter comes off of the receiver. You can connect all your speakers right to that and then plug it straight into that audio outlet. So it, it's um, very easy to do. You'll see that most of the industry uh, does their audio connectors in that kind of a fashion. Okay, great. Thank you. So next question, what kind of mics are supported and do 
they have noise do you have noise cancellation for the mic? So you can use the, the features like noise cancellation and advanced mic control um, are not built into this product right here. Let me go up to um, that audio piece. Um, you will find the more advanced mic features built into our CLSO product, which is a little more robust, and we'll look at that towards the end of the presentation. Uh, but in here, you could use a simple uh, line in mic uh, or 48 volt. Um, you, know, you could use something like a um, condenser, regular mic, something you might use in a, in a table in a conference room. You could even use a 48 volt uh, kind of a phantom mic, like one of those Q-Snack style mics, which you might see in a podium. Um, but you're not really going to have much control other than uh, adjusting the output volume on this amplifier here. This is meant just for a quick down and dirty audio solution. And you really need to go to a product like the CLSO where we'll get more advanced mic control. So this is very limiting, um, but it does allow you to do some basic mic. You could even use a wireless mic, you know, if you, if you have a base station that received the uh, wireless mic signal and then connected into um, this little amplifier here. Uh, whether, you, whether you're using the breakout connector or 3.5 millimeter or the RCA input from the wireless space station. So I did get a question about mixing mic and line. Okay. I would imagine. Um, so, know. yeah, with this device right here, you're going to either select um, one or the other. You're not really going to mix mic and line uh, on these. Um, again, when you go to the product the CLSO, you're going to do more of a, you're going to have a mixed environment where you have audio docking, for example, built in up to the mic. You won't get an advanced feature like that on here. Okay, here's another question for, I believe, this box. Where is the detect threshold for mic override adjusted? Um, in this system, that's not built in. Um, again, that's a feature that's built into the CLSO, which has more of the smart built into it. Um, in this case here, you're just going to select uh, mic as your input, and you're going to feed straight into it. And you'll have a volume of control. OK, and the last question, and then we can move on, is what is the maximum number of units that you can daisy chain on that 24 volt power supply? Um, I, the, the max on these right here that our engineering team recommends is four of these, um, which would give you um, eight speakers. Uh, you Technically, you probably could connect more of those together because they're each individually powered. Um, but I have a feeling that once you get too many of them, um, you know, it, it, it's kind of like a copy of a copy here. Um, these aren't built to be data chained, you know, too far down the road. So I think if you're doing two or four, you're going to be safe. But once you get beyond that, you might want to go to a bigger audio system. Excellent. Thank you, Ken. You're welcome. Uh, was that it on the questions right here, Kim? That was. OK. Let me move back forward here a little bit and get back to uh, We were looking at face plates. So on the transmitter side, you saw a plain white face plate, which by default comes with the transmitter. Uh, VTX does a wonderful job making some really great Face plates to go along with that uh, HDVS transmitter, and you've got a number of different styles to choose from. In addition to that, they also will make face plates that fit into floor boxes, which is real nice. As you look at the example here, and here's an HDVS with a number of inputs, uh, additional, pardon me, additional inputs next to it, and VTX can make a custom plate that covers all of those inputs as well. So it's a great feature if you're doing something a little bit more robust and you want to be able to have a custom face plate that fits the job. Um, Kim can definitely give you guys some more information on that. They do a wonderful job with those plates. Here's another style in case you're using one of the round kind of boxes. Um, you can fit right into there as well. Anything you want to add, Kim, on the um, on the plates before I go on? No, I'm. You know, again, the, the the sort of let your imagination run wild. To anybody who's out there, we do so much cool stuff with the the plates and with the floor boxes and panels. You know, uh, certainly. With it, Lona, and you can see, of course, there's tons of other connectors in the floor box. But you know, fiber can be you know added to this kind of solution. Anything you need, so always give us a call. Excellent. All right, so moving on now to the next solution. So let's we get to an application that's a little bit more robust. Now here is a banquet room. 
And this can take a lot of different shapes. Uh, but here's an area where we're doing a presentation. Uh, presenter needs some input at the podium. Uh, we've got actually two displays here. Notice at the front of the room, there's two different screens, so the whole audience gets a view. Uh, then in the center of the screen there, I've kind of drawn some lines and stuck a product in there to kind of show you. We're going to use one of our switcher scaler solutions here called the Line Pro. And I'm going to pair that up with uh, the little audio amplifier that we just looked at with the HDVS and uh, a couple of different uh, inputs so we can do some different multimedia uh, scenarios in a room like this. So take a quick look at this particular product. This is called the Line Pro 5 Gen 2. There are two other products in this category as well, but this is the most robust uh, of the line. This is a switcher scaler. It has 11 inputs on it. And if you look at the bottom row there from left to right, you've got control via IRRS-232. And in that purple box there, you see it has dual HDMI outputs. So I could go to one or two screens if I want to to accommodate the room for like the banquet room we just saw. Beside that, there are four HDMI inputs. I have a DVI input some analog VGA inputs, and next to that, a, uh, a whole suite of analog ports on the back of this, uh, and then control across the front. All the buttons there on the top, you see the source selection and control. Uh, this scaler is capable of outputting resolutions up to 1920 by 1200. Take a look at the diagram of this here. Along the bottom, you see my sources. Also notice on the laptop, there's a VGA cable connecting it, and then right beside that is a little analog audio cable. So I can take audio out of my laptop and embed it right into the switcher here. Uh, then look at the outputs. So the upper left corner, there's that little amplifier that we saw earlier just a couple of slides ago connected to a pair of speakers, um, the embedding audio and taking it out to that. Uh, now take a look at the two displays here. In this particular example, we're showing a projector and a flat panel TV up there. Uh, connected to the flat panel display is an HDMI cable. We're assuming in this application, the HDMI cable is long enough to reach the display. Maybe it's a local monitor or something just uh, close in the room. But the projector, let's assume um, for this example, that the projector is located at the back of the room or even up on a ceiling, so it's a little further away, beyond the safe distance for a long HDMI cable. So rather than using a long HDMI cable, I'm going to use a transmitter receiver pair, and I'm going to send a signal over HD base T to that projector. So I'm going to come out of my scalar switcher via HDMI, a short HDMI cable, go right into a transmitter, then I can go up to 207, 230 feet or 70 meters over category cable to a receiver, which will then break out to HDMI and connect right to that projector. Uh, here in this example too, if I had a projector that was HD base T ready, we could take that category cable straight into the back of that projector and eliminate the receiver here. So you have a lot of options. This is a bit more robust, gives us the ability to run a lot of different media types in, and do some scaling, and gives us dual video output. <clears throat> Price point for a solution like this, I got listed on the table here. The Lion Pro Switcher Scaler itself is $11.99 retail, and I've included the transmitter receiver pair for the one display so we can uh, locate that projector a little further away from our equipment rack. Uh, and then I've also got the audio amplifier included in there so we can have a pair of speakers to drive some audio for the room. So total price on a solution like this, just over $1,700. You've got switching, scaling built in, a number of different inputs for multimedia. Keep in mind, you could also connect something like an Apple TV uh, to this as well. Then you'd have a wireless interface directly into this uh, product also. Some of the advantages of going. Uh, I'm yes. I'm Go sorry. I'm sure that we get some questions that came in answered on this. Are the two HDMI in outputs for two different input signals or the same signal distribution out to two displays? Yeah, good question. So in this case, the two HDMI are identical. They're mirrored, so they're not matrixed outputs. So it allows you to go out to two, two displays if you want, but they're both going to show the same image. Great. Okay. Can you talk about HDCP compatibility? Yeah, so this is an HDCP compliant product right here. Uh, you, you'll find that with all of our products, everything in our switcher category and the switcher and through our matrix switchers, uh, HDCP compatibility is built, built into that. Uh, you've got HDCP 2.0 right now. Um, these particular products at the moment are not HDCP 2.2 compliant. That's something you'll see in 2015. Um, and for those of you who want to know what that means, 
that's just the next level of HTCP, which is going to allow um, uh, content control for 4K. Uh, but this is not a 4K piece, so we're, you know we don't have that built into it just yet. But it is HTCP compliant. How about fast switching technology? Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna see. This is one of our, our fastest switching products right here. You have fast switching built into this. Um, Particularly if you're on, uh, you know, like the digital inputs on this, I mean, you're going to pretty much see very little latency on these. Um, this is one of the, the fastest switching products in our line right here. Excellent. That was the last question, Ken. Thanks. Excellent. Let me um, catch back up here. So we talked about some of the advantages, and, and again, um, fully controlled by IRR RS232. This product also carries a 10-year warranty. And also keep in mind, with our warranty program, you also get advanced re next day advanced replacement within the first year of that warranty too. Uh, and that's out there um, just so you know that um, we're kind of covering your back. So if you get out there to install a product, and I know for a lot of dealers, you buy these with the job, installation gets delayed or it's scheduled out due to construction, and you're not on the job site until three or four months or longer after you pur purchase the product. So it's nice to know that when you get out there and if you have a product that's not working, you get next, next day advanced replacement, plus you have the 10-year warranty back to you up. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, some additional solutions going a little further beyond the classroom and the conference room as well. The picture on the left, for those of you who are doing any kind of residential installation, uh, we've seen a trend for the client who wants a video wall in their residence. So you see the picture here. You've got one nice big display and two smaller displays next to it. How do you create that with an Atlona solution? Or the big image there in the center, you've got a live broadcast, a newsroom, uh, where you might have several displays with the same image, several displays with different images. And how do we create and control an application like that? And then on the far right, uh, back to that medical application, which I alluded to a little earlier, where we might be doing some kind of training. Um, maybe we got multiple displays, maybe even some video conferencing happening here. So how do we share video across multiple different displays showing uh, several different camera shots as well. And to do applications like this, we get into a more advanced switcher product uh, called a matrix switcher. And at Lona offers matrix switchers in four different flavors. We have a four by four, which that's four inputs, four outputs. We have a six by six, an eight by eight, and a 16 by 16. Uh, and for purposes of time on the webinar here, we're just gonna look at our Pro 3 series uh, which is the 4x4 four four and the 6x6. Six six. Uh, but you'll see, particularly as we go into 2015, uh, you're going to see some, some condensing of a lot of these matrix pieces. So they're pretty much all going to have the same features across the board. Uh, but when you look at the matrix here, uh, you've got EDID learning and presets built into all of our matrix switchers. In fact, there's three different ways to actually manage EDID within our matrix switchers. You can set our matrix switchers to something called auto, which will allow the system to auto detect EDID and manage it. Uh, you can choose from a library of EDID that we keep built into uh, the actual matrix itself, or you can actually learn in EDID and assign it uh, to each input and output individually on here. Uh, the Pro 3 series of our matrix switchers uses the Class B HD base T chipset, which means you're going to get output distances of over 1080p up to 230 feet or 70 meters. If you look at the back of the matrix here, you'll see on the left side you've got six HDMI inputs. Then on the right side, the outputs are all category, uh, RJ45 jacks. Uh, so you're going to connect category cable right to that because we're going HD base T directly out of the matrix, uh, right to the displays or to a receiver and then to the display. You have what we call power over category cable, which means the amplifier of the matrix switch here is going to send power over the category cable, which is going to power that uh, receiver on the other end. You've got audio de-embedding on each zone. Uh, and then notice um, on ports 5 and 6, the far right side of the back of the matrix switcher, just below the two RJ45 jacks, you've got HDMI outputs. So ports 5 and 6 have mirrored, HD, uh, have mirrored HDMI outputs on them as well. So technically you have eight outputs on the 6x6 matrix. Uh, those HDMI outputs are going to output the same video as the category cable does in that same zone. But it gives you the ability to, number one, uh, take that HDMI feed out into a separate uh, audio system so you can break audio out in that zone 
or a surround sound type of application, or you can even run it to a local display monitor uh, or even two um, monitors in that same cell if needed. <clears throat> you have IR and RS-232 control. In addition to that, this product will sit on the network, so you have LAN control as well. It's got a great web GUI. Uh, you've got staff reporting through TCP IP as well. And the matrix switch here also handles Dolby True HD, DTS, and HD master audio pass-through. So if you are doing a surround sound application, it's a great handy feature to have there. And you've got redundant power supplies on this. So for your uh, high availability applications where you can't have these displays go down, you've got backup power supplies. I do recommend if you're going to use two power supplies, to plug those two power supplies into different circuits. So if the circuit goes down, you don't lose more powers. <clears throat> Take a look at the diagram on this system here. Uh, across the bottom, you see all my source inputs. They're coming in HDMI right to the back of the uh, receiver, the uh, matrix receiver. Now, let's say you've got an application where you want to use uh, one of those wall plate HDMI inputs, kind of like we saw back from the single display uh, solution a couple slides ago. So maybe somebody is sitting out at a desk somewhere and they've got a computer, perhaps with a digital signage application on it, and they want to be able to send their input to this matrix, but it happens to be located a couple hundred feet away beyond the distance of an HDMI cable. You could actually use a pair of transmitter receivers for the input. So you could actually send your input signal over category cable and then break it back out to HDMI right at the matrix in the rack and go straight in and then you can go category cable out to your displays. So it's kind of a nice feature when you're using HD-based T, you can get that extra distance. Now look at the output. So above the matrix switch here, I'm going category cable out, and notice I go right into a little box called the Pro 3 HD RAC. That's just a little uh, HD-based T receiver that's going to receive the signal over category cable and break out in the uh, signal to an HDMI cable so I can plug it right into the back of the display. Very simple, easy to use. That little box is very small. It easily mounts behind a flat panel display, so if you're hanging that on a wall, it's very unobtrusive and easy, easy to uh, fit right behind the display. Now, notice on the far left with the projector, I've got a different box there. In this case, I'm using the HDBS RX. This is the receiver we looked at earlier. This is the HD base receiver that has a scaler built into it. Now, the reason I'm using the scaler here is because I've got a projector. And I'm going to assume for the moment that with the projector, I'm going to have a nice big display. Uh, and the source down at the bottom may or may not always put out a nice 16 by 9 or 16 by 10 uh, aspect ratio. But I might always want that to use the native aspect ratio of that projector. So I'm going to go ahead and put the HDVS RX with the scaler right here so I can always scale my output from the matrix to match native resolution of that projector. It's kind of a nice little simple feature you can add in. Um, <clears throat> just below that, you'll see a little uh, icon for control. I didn't mention this earlier, but with Abnona products, all of our products are uh, control brand agnostic. That means you can take any control system that you're comfortable with using that works well for your business, and you can use it to control our Abnona products. So we work with uh, pretty much all the major and even the minor control programs that are out there. You'll find there are pretty much uh, drivers written for um, most of the products out there, and if you need some help, you can always contact uh, our engineering support department at Alona, and we'll help you get those drivers if you need them. Hey, Ken. Yeah, Ken. Does, does audio always follow video, or can it be switched independently? In this case, the audio is always going to follow the video, and if you want to do something different with the audio, you use one of the audio breakouts. That's how we provide an audio breakout at each zone, so that if you want to take audio out somewhere, you can bring it into a separate system and then route. Great, thanks. Oops. One more question, sorry. Oh, he said, okay, I meant can you lock out men? Oh, okay, so this is another question. Can you lock out a menu? So, um, and, uh, a client can't accidentally change any settings. So this was a question for um, for the last product you were looking at, not the matrix switch. Hey, Kim, sorry, I don't know why my, my signal dropped out there. Um, oh, can you hear me okay. okay now? I, I can hear you okay. Um, 
So the I, I got a question about locking out the menus so a client or an end user can't change any settings. And this question was um, not for the matrix switch, but it was for the product you were talking about before this. So the uh, Lion Pro 5, just the regular matrix, or even the HDVS, you mean? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. So with the HDVS, which was the transmitter receiver that we looked at earlier, um, your client won't really see any menu unless they can actually physically get to the little receiver, which you're probably going to mount um, behind a flat panel display. They'd have to get back there and press buttons. There's no way to stop them from physically pressing the buttons, and we can't turn the buttons off so they don't work. The best that would be to put it in a spot where they don't see it, so they couldn't press the buttons on that. And this is true of that Line Pro receiver. Um, now, if you have a separate control system you're using in the room, um, you may be able to build something into that control system, which would only give them access to certain menus. Um, but if they can physically touch the box and press buttons, then they can get two menus. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so back here at the um, matrix diagram, let me move to the next slide. So look at pricing on our matrix. So the 6x6, six six, which we just saw, carries a retail price point of basically uh, $4,500. And then I've included six of the receivers, one for each display on the HD base outputs. Um, so it gives you a grand total of $61.79 retail price for a uh, six display matrix system, which would allow you to do any of those applications we looked at earlier, whether it's a video wall in a residential application, uh, multiple displays in the newsroom, or even a uh, multi-display training application like the medical image that we looked at earlier. <clears throat> now, earlier we talked a little bit about the CLS 0612, so let's get to that now. We'll, we'll kind of wrap up with that. And this is a product that really suits the boardroom well, so we're going to kind of take a look at Stepping, uh, we looked at some um, applications beyond the boardroom. We're going to kind of step back into the boardroom, uh, and you can use your imagination and use this product in other places too. Uh, but there's two applications we're looking at right here on the screen. The image on the left shows a nice big conference room where you've got a primary display, maybe even a secondary display, control system, and multiple different inputs where people, uh, participants in the meeting can connect in and display. And then on the right, here you're looking at a slightly different, more unconventional type of conference room. We've got multiple displays, video conferencing happening, uh, where um, participants can uh, connect either wired or wirelessly and participate as well. So let's take a look at this application in a little more detail. Here we have a product that we call the UHD CLSO 612. CLSO stands for Classroom and Small Office. And this is a switcher scaler that was designed specifically for meeting spaces, uh, collaboration spaces, uh, and a lot, and it gives some more advanced and robust features than what we saw earlier on the HDVS extender product. So let's take a look at the back of this guide. <clears throat> and then the, uh, highlighted in the yellow box there are the inputs that are found on the back of the CLSO. Uh, inputs one and two are HDMI inputs. Inputs three and four are HD base T inputs. Now think about this. This is uh, a really powerful, um, feature of this product. You have HD base T direct inputs, which means you can take one of those wall plates like we looked at earlier and one of those box transmitters and put those virtually anywhere, in a desk, on top of a desk, mounted under a desk, in a wall plate, in a floor box, wherever your presenter might be. And the only thing you need to run to that transmitter is a single category cable. You don't have to worry about audio cables, control cables, power, just a single category cable. So you've got a lot of flexibility. And on top of that, that transmitter can be up to 230 feet or 70 meters away from this product, which is probably sitting in an equipment rack. So you've now got a lot of flexibility, and you're no longer limited by short-run HDMI cables or power requirements at the transmitter. Then beside that, inputs 5 and 6 are analog, <clears throat> which uh, standard VGA. You can also use a breakout dongle and connect component. S video or composite inputs directly in here as well. So a lot of great features here. Now this is um, a 4K compatible device, which means if I have a 4K source, I can run it into this um, into this device as well. There's a 4K scaler built in, which we'll talk about on the next slide also. 
So now look, let's take a look at the outputs on this. And now I've got these highlighted in the green box on the right there. You have dual outputs. You have a HDMI output and an HD base T output on the back of this. These outputs are mirrored, which means they are going to show the exact same image on both outputs. Uh, they are scaled video outputs, which means we can take any resolution in, and with the CLSO 612, we can upscale to 4K. That means full 4K at 4096 by 2160, or even Ultra HD at 3840 by 2160, and we can output that resolution out the uh, HDMI or the HD base T ports. Likewise, we can also downscale, which means if we're sending a 4K signal into the inputs, we could use the scaler to scale down to match, say, a 1080p resolution on an existing display. So you've got a couple different options there. Um, you've got uh, the HDMI, obviously, is going to be a shorter run. Uh, you could connect a transmitter receiver to that output if you wanted to be able to use category cable and go a longer distance. And you've also got the HD based D output right there, uh, which allows you to go out to a projector or a receiver located further away. Now keep in mind, with these HD based T ports here, these are powered ports. So that means the two HD based D inputs, inputs three and four, if I'm using a transmitter located in a conference room table, for example, <clears throat> the CLSO is going to send power out those HD based T ports and it's going to power that transmitter. Likewise, the HD based T output port. I've got a receiver at the other end that's breaking out to an HDMI to feed a projector. This port's going to power that receiver, so I do not need to plug that receiver in if it's behind the display uh, or up at a projector. <clears throat> now, taking a look at some of the audio features, uh, we alluded to some of these earlier. You've got more microphone control when you're using this product. Um, you've got microphone input with audio ducking, which means if you've got, say, some program audio playing, and a presenter begins speaking, the audio in the background will fade out, the presenter will talk, and when they stop, the audio will come back uh, <clears throat> will come back online. Now you have a really great web UE control that was built for this product. And if you're using the CLSO, I would recommend you use that web UE control. It's the easiest way to do this. And we also have some really great user videos on our YouTube channel, at Lona YouTube channel, which shows you exactly how to use this. You've got multiple audio or volume controls uh, for that microphone in there. Uh, this does support balance line or mic level sources. Uh, you do have a phantom power available on this again. So uh, if you've got a podium, for example, with like a gooseneck style mic that requires power, um, this device will power that microphone as well. <clears throat> you have analog audio embedding and de-embedding built into this. So if we're coming in those analog ports, I can bring my audio in, embed it in here, and send it out, out the uh, de-embedding port to a, a local uh, audio system. Um, you have uh, line level control on that also. Um, <clears throat> line control built into there. Um, take a look at a diagram on this so we can kind of see how this lays out. Now, in the upper left corner here, I've got a video conference system. Notice I'm using a standard HDMI input plate. This is HDMI in, converting it to HD base T, traveling up to 230 feet to my equipment rack. Then beside that, at the conference room table, I'm using the HDVS transmitter box that we saw earlier, which allows me to have two HDMI and a VGA input. That's feeding over category cable into the uh, into port number four, which is an HD base T port. <clears throat> also think about this. Port number four here, which is a one single HD base T port, is feeding to that uh, transmitter box that's at the table. That transmitter box has three inputs. So by using HD base T in our HDVS system, we're actually taking that one single port and expanding it to allow three devices to connect. So we're getting additional functionality out of this by using the HDVS here. Then back at the rack, just below the CLSO, you'll see my local devices. I've got a PC there. I've got a VCR DVD player. And then next to that, you see a box which looks like an Apple TV. That's because it is. Um, again, Apple TV, a $99 device, gives your customers who walk in with an iPhone or an iPad or a Mac a real simple way to wirelessly connect and take over the presentation. And for those of you who are not using Apple or have customers who are not using Apple but are on a, on a Windows-based PC, there's a software program out there called Air. Parrot, 
parrot like the bird, uh, air parrot, and I want to say it's roughly $10 for a license. You can load that onto a Windows PC and it will stream over AirPlay right to the uh, Apple TV. And then those Windows users can also stream wirelessly now and interact with the CLSO. Uh, to the right there, I've got my local monitor using the HDMI output. Above that is my control system. Again, any control system you want to use will work with this product. I've got audio going out to a separate amplifier. And then I've got video coming out my, my HD uh, base T port going to an HD base T receiver and then breaking out HDMI into the projector. Now again here, if I had a projector that was HD base T ready, I could feed the category cable straight into the back of that projector and eliminate that HD base T receiver. Uh, then in the upper right corner, I've included this table here, which shows you the price breakout for this system. You get the CLSO 612, that's the 4K switcher scaler. It retails for $19.99. Below that, I've included the transmitter uh, a box unit and the transmitter wall plate unit. Put an audio amplifier in there and the receiver to go along with that projector. So you have a grand total of $32.39 for a complete system that gives you HD base T inputs multiple inputs, uh, gives you uh, 4K scaling and HD base T output. And at that price, with all of those additional accessories, the input transmitters and the amplifier, you're still almost half the retail cost of the closest competitor that offers 4K scaling and the switcher scaler like this. So it's a pretty powerful product, gives you a lot of flexibility and a great value. And in addition to that, you still get the 10-year warranty on this product with advanced replacement in the first year. <clears throat> Any questions, Kim, that might have popped up on the CLSO? I do have, I have one question, and if anybody else has any questions, now's the time to ask. Um, any fade to black feature between, between switching on the uh, CLSO? You know, right now that does not exist, and we've been asked that before, and there is a firmware update coming out um, for this box in the near future, and it's built so that we can have additional firmware updates, and the fade to black is something that our engineers are looking at. I can't say whether or not that's included on this next firmware update, um, but it's something that certainly could be, um, which also uh, reminds me, uh, that's a great suggestion, by the way. So when you have an idea like that and you see the feature that we might not include, we have an email called ideas at atlona.com. Definitely send that idea to ideas at atlona.com. It goes directly to our engineering team and they will look at that and that gives them direct access to you guys and what you actually want, what features you want to see on these products. So it's something that we can add in. Uh, I'll pass that information along as well though because that's a great feature. Great. I have a question on the um, line three. Do you mind taking that question? Yeah, go ahead. How do you control multiple selection of sources? Um, this is on, uh, are we talking about the CLSO product? No, we're talking about the Pro Line 3. Um, the Line Pro, uh, Line Pro 5 that we looked at earlier? Uh, he actually asked about the three, so but yeah, you can do it on the on the five. Sorry. Okay, we, we have a line pro two, a line pro four, and a line pro five. That's why the three uh, threw me there. Um, how do you control multiple selection of sources? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I understand what you're asking for there, but um, obviously you've got selection of inputs across the front of that panel, physical buttons. You have some IR and RS two thirty two control. So you can control uh, and select any input you want um, via whichever control system you want to pair with that. Um, is that. Am I answering the question right, Kim? You know, if he has a follow-up question, I'll just invite, um, invite him to ask it. Okay. okay. Um, and you said all the HDCP 2.2 is going to be implemented in 2015. None of the products today, they're all still 2.0, correct? Yeah, that's correct. So when we go into 2015, in fact, by the time we are uh, at um, uh, Infocom here in the States, and really ISC coming up in February in Europe, you're going to see a number of new products being released uh, in our extender line, uh, in our switcher line, and in our matrix line that are going to be for fully 4K compatible 
which means they're also going to be HDCP 2.2 compatible so that we can offer that content protection with the 4K sources. Awesome. Hey, Ken, can you direct somebody on your website where they might be able to find the RS-232 code? Is that a, a document you have? Um, yeah, we have. There's a there's a tech support page on there, and if you go there, um, there there's a, a download section. All of our RS-232 codes are, can be found there, as well as our firmware updates. I would also encourage anybody um, to uh, take a look at the uh, training site as well, which is at lonaacademy.com. Uh, in there, you will you will not only will you find access to links to those codes too, but you'll also find links to all of our pre-recorded webinars and all of our training videos, which will show you things like how to connect um, and upload firmware updates or uh, connect and use the RS-232 software uh, to update uh, your products or control your products. Um, when, can any of the hardware that's been shipping be upgraded to 2.2? Unfortunately, unfortunately, it cannot. And the reason is, the uh, HDCP 2.2 is a hardware chipset, so it's a physical chip that has to be installed. And actually, um, uh, the folks who make that chip don't actually release it until 2015, uh, except for I think maybe Sony has an early release of it. But the majority of manufacturers, we can't actually get that chip until 2015. And it is a physical uh, installation that has to be put in the product, a chip. So there is no software update grade to do that which is why I always caution uh, all the integrators I talk to. If you're selling any 4K products right now, whether it's um, switching equipment or even displays, if it's not HDCP 2.2 compliant, make sure that your customer doesn't, isn't going to be sending content protected equip, uh, content over 4K in the future because it will not work with the products that they're buying today if they're only HTCP 2.0 compliant. They will have to repurchase again later new hardware that is HTCP 2.2 compliant uh, in order to send uh, HTCP compliant 4K content um, in that application. Excellent, excellent. That's great advice. Um, are there any plans for a uh, matrix output version of the CLSO in the future? Yes, as a matter of fact, um, we do have uh, two more versions of it planned. Um, one you're going to see sooner than later, uh, coming into next year. It'll be called the CLSO 824, which, by the way, the current CLSO is called 612. Um, six meaning six inputs, and the 12 actually being, uh, it's really uh, one uh, squared, if you will, um, meaning that there are two outputs, but they they're not matrix, they show the same image. So we have the 824 coming out next year, which will have eight inputs, and it will have um, four outputs, and two of them will be mirrored, and the other two will be mirrored, but they'll be separate. Does that make sense? So two will show one image, two will show the other image. So it's a, kind of a, a, two, different, two different outputs. Okay. Two different sources can be shown. What? Okay, I think we can uh, can continue talking about the CLSO six twelve. All right. Well, I think we are kind of wrapping up there. I just was getting to the last point. Just the advantage of the six twelve, you've got adjustable mic docking, the ability to scale up and down. It's the only product on the market right now that does four K scaling up and down uh, in this type in this class of product. <clears throat> you have the balanced audio. You have auto switching on these inputs which means uh, that whatever the, the uh, device is active, it's going to switch to that active port. If that device is unplugged, it's going to go back to the last active port. <coughs> um, it can be used uh, with a third-party dongle, which allows you to break out the S-Video composite component. It uh, works with all of our HDVS transmitters, which we talked about. And of course, you've got the dual outputs on that with the uh, uh, warranty and advanced replacement on that. Um, so that kind of wraps up what we were talking about with the CLSO. Uh, you've, you've looked at now just in review. You've looked at single display solutions. You've looked at multi-display solutions. And you've looked at advanced applications like the CLSO, and we've talked about ways that, that these can be used across a number of different applications: uh, wayfinding applications, digital signage applications, uh, campus applications, 
different lobbies, digital signage, menu boards, residential applications, and of course our standard classroom and conference room. So a lot of, a lot of ways to use Alona solutions uh, coming into the new year. Feel free to jump online and take a look at our, our, our new set of webinars that will be coming out. I know Kim and I have talked about this, so there will be more Alona VTX webinars in the future. Um, and on alonaacademy.com, uh, going back to that, you're going to see a whole uh, a suite of videos online uh, that show you how to showcase and use all the Alona products. In addition to that, <clears throat> we have an e-learning portal that's available through our website. So for those folks who want to take the next step with Alona and get a deeper understanding and knowledge of concepts like EDIT, HTCP, 4K, resolution, 3D, bandwidth, uh, sign up for our online training at loanacademy.com uh, and get access to that e-learning portal and get at Lona certified and you will learn about all those concepts and about the rest of the Lona solutions that are out there as well. And Kim, thanks again for inviting Lona to join your webinar today. We really appreciate uh, all of your support. Absolutely, and thank you for uh, for heading this up and uh, and going through these different solutions. If anybody has any uh, follow-up questions, you can certainly reach out to me, Kim R at btx.com. You can find every Atlona product available on our website, or give us a call at 1-800-666-0996 to uh, to get a quote or to learn more. Uh, give any other technical questions, and we certainly appreciate everybody taking the time out of their day. And I wish everybody. Happy holidays and uh, a wonderful new year. So thanks again, Ken. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.